Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm gonna to be talking about BCAAs. They stand for branched chain amino acids and they are an extremely popular supplement. I mean, lots of people take these things just because their friends take them or some dumb coach actually told them these things actually work. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing based on hard evidence if BCAAs have any potential benefits or if they're just a waste of money. So let's get into it. To understand branched chain amino acids, let's first look at the bigger picture. Your body needs nine essential amino acids. These are called essential because, well, your body can't make them. Every human needs to get all nine from outside sources. All nine are found in abundance in very common food sources like chicken, steak, or eggs. Branched chain amino acid supplements aren't anything crazy fancy. They are simply three of the nine essential amino acids already found in everyday foods. What makes BCAAs popular is the amino acid leucine. You see, leucine stimulates muscle protein synthesis by the pathway mTOR. This is all just nerdy talk for saying leucine signals muscle growth. You could even argue leucine is the most important of all nine essential amino acids. But just because it's important, is there evidence that taking leucine separate from most of the other amino acids have any benefits? The answer is a big fat no. You see, studies have shown that for the synthesis of new muscle protein, all essential amino acids must be present in adequate amounts. So yes, leucine signals for muscle growth, but because BCAAs only contain three of the nine essential amino acids, you won't actually get any muscle growth without the other amino acids present. Leucine is like a Kobe Bryant. Sure, he's an important player, but he could never win a game playing by himself. So leucine is fairly worthless, and even with the other two branched chain amino acids inside BCAA supplements, you're still missing the other six to get anything going. But could it be possible to take BCAAs on top of everyday food in order to spike leucine and hopefully reap additional muscle-related benefits? Well, that won't work either. There are no added benefits after a certain amount of leucine. Studies have shown the top threshold for reaping any benefit from leucine is at 1.8 grams per meal. Any extra leucine won't do anything. This is also a great time to remind everybody that even hitting the top threshold of leucine per meal is very easy with food alone, as well as being far more beneficial because food contains all amino acids instead of just three who can't do anything on their own like we talked about. Now, those are some studies geared towards leucine and leucine supplementation, but let's dive into deeper, more comprehensive research on BCAAs as a whole. One study showed when combined with heavy resistance training for eight weeks, supplementation with nine grams of BCAAs 30 minutes prior and after exercise had no preferential effects on body composition and muscle performance. Here is a comprehensive review done in 2017. This one states that we conclude that the claim that consumption of dietary BCAAs stimulates muscle protein synthesis or produces an anabolic response in human subjects is unwarranted. It's also a good time to point out that in this review, a few studies even showed BCAAs to have a negative effect. Ouch. Here's another study that concluded despite the popularity of BCAA supplements, we find shockingly little evidence for their efficiency in promoting muscle protein synthesis or lean mass gains and would advise the use of intact protein as opposed to a purified combination of BCAAs that appear to antagonize each other in terms of transport both in circulation and likely into the muscle. And another study that concluded it does not alter acute muscle thickness, performance, perceived soreness and weaknesses or markers of muscle damage. And yet another one which even showed the placebo of BCAAs don't even work. But even after seeing all the clear obvious evidence, BCAA fanboys will still advocate for their use to prevent muscle loss during fasted cardio. Before I dive into the actual evidence on this aspect, I just wanted to quickly burst a pretty obvious bubble, and that is, when you take BCAAs during fasted cardio, it defeats the whole purpose of fasted cardio because, well, BCAAs contain calories. BCAA supplements tend to be labeled as zero calories, but remember, they are simply a building block of a whole protein. It's absolutely impossible for them to be zero calories. They're actually about four calories per gram, and the reason this isn't listed is because the FDA will not allow free-forming amino acids as having calories. 
but even if you take them during fasted cardio, which we just discussed is technically no longer fasted, they still won't have any added muscle retention benefits. A study done by highly respected industry experts Brad Schoenfield and James Krager showed that as long as total protein intake is on point, you won't lose any muscle training fasted or unfasted. When it comes to stimulating muscle growth or preventing muscle breakdown, basic whey protein is just a significantly better choice. Not to mention you get five times as much protein, plenty of the other necessary amino acids, and just as many branched chain amino acids when you buy protein over BCAAs. Gram for gram, whey protein is generally way cheaper. So as you can see, BCAAs are highly overrated. They can't do anything on their own. They're nothing special that you can't already find in everyday foods. And on a diet that's already sufficient in protein, they provide zero benefits. If you were to take something, basic whey protein has just been shown to be a better choice in every scenario at a lower cost. And so, that is all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please share it with a BCAA fanatic so they can finally see the truth. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more. Peace.